welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Ed Gamble, Maisie Adam and Milton Jones, Rhys James, Hugh Dennis and Angela Barnes. We start with the picture of the week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? Have you just escaped another vasectomy? <laughs> <laughs> Is this what he wears as well as a condom now, just in case? <laughs> <laughs> Is this what dinner ladies will have to look like if they reopen school? <laughs> Like, how long until everyone gets the vaccine? He's gone, about that long? <laughs> <laughs> is the, the people inside are probably saying, I'm sorry, Boris, there's nothing we can do. The economy is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right, all right. No, don't bring in, don't bring in reality. In my <laughs> <studio>. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Downer over here, all right? <laughs> They're doing a school group science project and they've just <laughs> sent the fit kid next door to <laughs> measure the air. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you're supposed to do clap for the NHS in person? <laughs> <laughs> That's how he's trying to pay the scientists with the clap, like he did the nurses. <laughs> I've seen a hairnet that looks better than the hair underneath. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when he takes it off, it'll be a right mess. <laughs> <laughs> why does this uh, why does this open down the front? This is the first PP I've seen that's been made with the flasher in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's actually in the lab and they're studying him. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Ed, can anyone give me the correct answer? Is this how we'll be able to see our families next Christmas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the correct answer, clearly, Dara, is that is, um, Boris Johnson. It's absolutely <laughs> it. Thank you very much. How could you tell? He's the monster guy. He's the monster guy. Yes, this is Prime Minister Boris Johnson visiting a vaccine facility in Oxfordshire. This is news that against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic, he's facing increasing pressure on a number of fronts. Conservative MPs are urging him to map a route out of lockdown and reopen schools as the government tries to keep a lid on the new strains of the virus. So how is he doing? Great. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. doing so well. <laughs> I think, he's, I think he's really smashing it, actually. Not, not a lot of people are saying that, but I think he has hit this one out of the park. <laughs> this is so typical, Ed, of the sort of person who went to school with him. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with asking him to reveal some sort of exit strategy for this is it sort of assumes that he's got one. Yeah. You know, it's like asking me to reveal my abs. <laughs> <laughs> One, I, I don't think he's on a particular... I think he should, there's times he should have been way more decisive and there's massive mm -hmm. questions to be asked. However, I do think going, we need a plan to get out of this. At some point, you just want to go, it's a, pa you, it's a pandemic, yeah, yeah. you babies. You just have to <laughs> yeah. wait. We're kind of... It's a, a virus. Like, I mean, yeah. they all go on about the war, like, whatever. They have me to survive a year and are going, this is too much. I'm bored of this now. <laughs> Would they survive an actual war? Going, oh, Churchill, how much longer does this have to go on? <laughs> Make us promises, cos we are babies. Make us promises! <laughs> it's a pandemic! I love, how, I love how MPs always use national holidays as reference points for how long things will take. So they were like, oh, we're not going to be able to do this by Christmas. Now they're saying, like, oh, we won't be back in school till after Easter. Right, but pretty soon they're going to run out of mainstream ones because there's a big gap between Easter and Halloween. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll start saying things like, oh, I'm sorry, but gyms won't be reopening until after International Pyjamas Day. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, look, you won't be able to mix households until well gone June, so you will miss National Road Safety Week. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> In terms of uh, Boris being slightly out of date, at one stage during the thing he said, I hope this will all be finished by tulip season. <laughs> yeah. There you go, International Dog Day. Oh, Mr. Finger on the Pulse. <laughs> <laughs> we knew he didn't have his finger on the pulse when he's only just discussing closing the borders. It's like it's been open for a year, mate. When you just realised there's a pandemic? It's like making people shower before they get in a swimming pool that's already full of piss. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, banning, banning international travel ten months into a pandemic, like trying to put a condom on at your child's graduation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
They want people to go into hotels, don't they, now? Is that what they're talking yeah, about? They want, they want people hotels, to go into yeah. hotels, come back and self-isolate in a hotel for 10 days. And the question is, which hotels? And for one, one brand, one brand of hotels, it's just a simple name change. It'd just be Covotel. <laughs> <laughs> When the kids do go back to school, that they'll come back in, like they'll do it in phases. Um, so presumably the emo kids first, um, <laughs> <laughs> then, then the ones that are having a rebellious phase, and then the ones who don't know if they're a lesbian or just really enjoy hockey. Then <laughs> people are saying that kids need to go back to school to socially develop with their friends. If I'd not been in school mixing with other boys, I'd be a way better person. You know, I'm not... I, I saw my friend Anthony try and fit a whole board rubber in his foreskin. I don't think that's what we need. <laughs> yeah, but what you have to remember... That's not what we want to send most, kids back to school for. Most people in this country don't go to private school, then. <laughs> yeah, fine, wh whatever they use is instead of a board rubber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please, though, imagine, imagine these kids don't go back to school for, like, as long as possible, and then this is just a whole generation of absolute morons. How clever are we going to feel when we come oh, across these yeah. kids in 20 years at a party? We just blow their minds with the simplest shit imaginable. Just yeah. in conversations going, did you know that Richard of York gave battle in vain? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then, like, a magic trick, you can go, and not just that, look at the rainbow, what do you see? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What uh, policy idea was the government forced to dismiss this week? This was a plan to give uh, £500 to anyone who's self-isolating. Yes. And the reason they turned it down is because if they were to do that, by now, they would owe Keir Starmer 1,500 quid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keir Starmer is now on his third isolation for having the, yeah. the third... It's like Keir Starmer... Is, I'm sure a fine mind, but he's like Mr Bean at this stage, <laughs> trying to keep his shirt clean for an event. He's <laughs> 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 in a long-running... Oh, no, pasta sauce! Wow! Now, <laughs> now I've got to get another shirt. Like, it's like, what? I've got to self-isolate again? <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah! <laughs> <laughs> 500 pounds will cover you for the 10 days, two weeks uh, of self-isolation. I think it's only if you've got COVID. Yeah, they, they said it might happen. And, I, and then they said it's not going to happen. I love at that point when they announced it wasn't going to happen, there was just someone halfway through licking a lamppost. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they've wasted so much money, this government, on doing all these different schemes, right? They've just, like, they did track and trace. They're getting all these police on the streets now. They're, like, buying locks to, like, lock up benches and stuff like that. It's in the billions what they've spent, right? It would have been more effective and cheaper if just at the start of all of this they'd have said, right, everyone's got to stay in the house. Whoever stays in the longest gets five million quid. <laughs> yeah. Five million quid. To stay. I know it means nothing to you, Dara, but to the rest. Ah, no, I could do the other wing of the house. <laughs> Uh, and so where can we get the vaccine? The vaccine is, is now more available than it was. Well, all over like the place. place. Very much all over the place, yeah. You can get it in, uh, in cathedrals. Yes. Salisbury Cathedral, you can do it. You it's can. a very useful place for people praying it isn't Novichok. <laughs> 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 They've started a hub in an old IKEA store, haven't they? Yeah, and yeah. I thought you've got to be careful there because you ask for a Pfizer, you could end up with a coffee table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they used to work in IKEA, selling over seven thousand different items. Dara, give me a number between one and seven thousand. I'll tell you what it is. Two hundred and thirty-four. Sorry, out of stock. <laughs> 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 You chose that one. It's a high risk game to play, but it's funny when it works. <laughs> Apparently, if you get the IKEA vaccine, though, you've got to administer it yourself while your girlfriend tells you you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, just when you finish doing it, you find an extra syringe and you don't know what you were going to use it for. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Country Living Museum is used for the Peaky Blinders set. Um, so, if you get your vaccine here, one of the side effects could just be a really dodgy, brummy accent. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you come out and be like, thanks so much for my vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, what advice did NHS Trust in Scotland have for people venturing out in the snow? This is, um, telling people to walk like a penguin. That's the advice, <laughs> yeah. This is not, just when you think that 2021 can't get any more batshit mental, it turns out Happy Feet is a public information film. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually decent. It checks out, though. I mean, people say people got, got angry, but it's, it makes perfect sense. Like, if you're walking on ice and snow, the, uh, you, you have to waddle. It's the, it's the safest thing. <laughs> 
my village <laughs> up in Yorkshire, we lived in like a, um, a dip like that, and there was a woman in my village, no one knew her name, she was just known as 10 to 2, because whenever it got icy, she used to walk down the hill with her feet like that, going 10 to 2, 10 to 2, 10 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever found out her name. <laughs> even, even in the summer, people would be like, there's 10 to 2, 10 to 2. 10 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> Think of asking her name. I just love the idea that it's like fair enough. She's got her own walking technique, but she felt the need to like say it out loud to herself as she was doing it. She's good. Ten to two. Ten to two. Amazing. You get more Yorkshire every week on this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd hear from you. Uh, when I was in Yorkshire, we lived in a dip. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I am the second most well-known person from my village, except for 10 to 2. Shout out to 10 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> we're all happy, we're all happy in, in dip. Uh... She, fell, she, she fell down dip one day, she became half past six. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, at the end of that round, the points go to Angela, Hugh, and Reese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we play a round called Baby Got Vax. <laughs> this game <laughs> involves Angela and Milton. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, here we go. Our first topic, please. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is ageing. Ah. Angela. Ah, so hello. Uh, I am 44, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh... Oh, I gave you a moment for a gasp of surprise. Fuck you. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> people actually... People often ask me how I manage to look so young, and I do have a secret to looking young, and I will share it with you. And my secret is that I wake up every single morning and I don't have any children. <laughs> <laughs> when you know the tricks, it is. <laughs> I'm part of uh, what they call the Peter Pan generation, Generation X. We're, we're the generation that had the first Alco Pops, right? And I think that's why we'll never grow old, because Alco Pops send you a message, don't they? So you don't have to get old. You can get pissed on lemonade forever, you know? <laughs> it's a Because alcohol was a rite of passage, wasn't it? It was something you had to grow to love, like olives or stepchildren. You know? <laughs> still drink Alco Pops. I, like, I thought by the time I was 44, I'd be a sort of sophisticated drinker. You know, drinking expensive red wine with my friends while discussing current affairs. I thought I'd be French. That's what I thought would happen. Because <laughs> um, no, you never see a French person, do you? Never see a French person with red wine lips. Never. Me, two glasses of red wine, I look like I've sucked off a felt tip. Why is that? <laughs> said to me, people had said to me before I turned 40, that when you turn 40, as a woman, you become invisible. I was like, brilliant, because that's like the best superpower, right? And <laughs> then I got a taste of what they actually mean. I was with my brother. Now, my brother's a lot younger than me. He's 12 years younger than me. Um, his name's Phil, or as I like to call him, whoops. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Um, we were walking along together, and we walked past a nightclub, and there was a guy outside the nightclub, and he was handing out flyers to passers-by, and he gave one to my brother, and he didn't give one to me, and I was furious. I was, how dare you judge me on my age and appearance? How dare you decide? I've got more disposable income than young people. I could spend it in your establishment. How dare... And the guy sheepishly handed me a flyer, and I snatched it out of his hand and walked round the corner, and that's when I realised it was a flyer about the importance of checking your testicles. <laughs> 21, mate. I could have testicles. Thank you very much, Angela. <laughs> that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And it's childhood. <laughs> so, I come from a family of failed magicians. I've got two half-sisters. <laughs> Apparently, I brought my biological parents out in a rash, uh, so I was brought up by my non-biological parents. <laughs> <laughs> An upbringing of little comfort, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, years ago, being in the Hundred Acre Wood, and next to me, there was a girl with a twig, and I was standing on a little bridge, and she said, 
Poo sticks? I said, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> you find the twig helps, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like nursery rhymes. Oh, no. Grand old Duke of York, manic depressive. Well, when he was up, he was up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably lived in a dip. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, that doesn't normally work. <laughs> <laughs> My brother, he's in his final year if he doesn't stop annoying me. <laughs> it's not his fault when he was young, he fell into a snow globe. <laughs> Managed to survive, just uh, badly shaken. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, well done. Point there for Milton Jones. Sit back down. Thank you very much. <laughs> Our next round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. Maisie, which category would you like? Uh, world News, please. Ooh. Lovely. Your topic is mm. World News. The answer is 100 days. What is the question? Uh, is it how long has January lasted for this year? <laughs> 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 How long till there's a female president of America? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, um, is it how long will you now spend in quarantine if you make a day trip to France? <laughs> <laughs> is it, um, after it's rained, how long does it take to get out of a dip? <laughs> <laughs> is it for how long could I not shit after the short-lived Scotch egg boom? Of <laughs> <laughs> Is it how long since an email did actually find me well? <laughs> <laughs> it... How long does every hour feel when you're homeschooling? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how much time do I save in restaurants by combining my starter and pudding into one simple, delicious tiramisu? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Is it how long does the government wait before following the science? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how long have I gone without masturbating in total? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how long does it take a couple of snails to play a game of dominoes using some ladybirds? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, is it how long has Joe Biden given himself to kind of launch his presidency? Absolutely right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You, well done. Very good. <laughs> Yes, the question I was going to go was, what timescale did Joe Biden set to roll out his legislative agenda? This is the news that Joe Biden has outlined his plans for his first 100 days in office and will focus on coronavirus, climate change and international relations. So what has he done so far? Well, he's rolled back a load of Trump policies, hasn't he? So the, the, he's rejoining the uh, World Health Organization, yep. um, the travel bans on predominantly Muslim countries, he's lifting those, and the no fat chicks in the Pentagon rules gone. <laughs> 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 Didn't get as much coverage as he should have that rule, but yeah, he has yeah. cleared that out there. That's, that's... He's lifted the Muslim travel ban just at the moment where nobody is going to want to go to America at all. So <laughs> he's gone like, don't worry, travel ban's lifted, and Muslims all over the world have gone, you're all right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's lifted the travel ban at the exact same time he's rejoined the Paris Climate Agreement. That feels like mixed messages to me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and what changes has he made to the Oval Office? He's moved out the Winston Churchill bust. I was going to say, was this one modelled on when Churchill was going through his severe teenage acne phase? <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was modelled on when he was going through his severe presenting Mock the Week phase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's very difficult to do this while not looking at it. Uh... <laughs> Why do you think Trump had a, a bust of Churchill? And my theory is that he would turn to the bust of Churchill and he would go, am I the greatest president that ever lived? <laughs> and Churchill would answer, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they take out his uh, Trump's Diet Coke button as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trump had a button that he used to press and someone would bring him a Diet Coke. The only good thing he ever did, and Biden's got rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> As a president, you just get to put in whatever you want. Like, Trump had the Diet Coke button, Barack Obama had a basketball court put in. What's, yep. what's Biden going to have? Like, a cuckoo clock that gives you insurance advice? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I don't 
think he's had the Diet Coke button removed. I think he's just replaced it with a Horlicks button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the is, though, so apparently what he used to do with the Diet Coke button, it was like a little joke yeah. Trump would do, where people would come in and they would see a red button and he would go, do you want me to press the button? And then they'd sort of, like, other leaders would, like, laugh awkwardly and then he would press it and someone would come in with a Diet Coke oh. and it was like a funny little prank. Right, which is nowhere near as big a deal as his prank when he'd go, do you want a Diet Coke? <laughs> <laughs> just in the background. Greenland just... <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else hear that someone blew their nose on the Zoom just then? No. Did they? Did they? Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> 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 is endangering the rest of the Brady Bunch here. <laughs> are all sitting around you and you're spreading your COVID <laughs> germ. There's a guy there who's in bed and I can't see his hands and it's making me really oh. uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> The weirdest person or the scariest person is the woman sitting in front of the tarpaulin in front of the draped oh plastic in oh the corner God. there. That what <laughs> is going on behind that? <laughs> What? Yes, yes, pointing man. I'd be very nervous. Because yeah. what? Yes, somewhere along that top row. What's behind this sheet? Uh, okay, whose inauguration outfit went viral? Bernie. Yeah, Bernie. Yeah. Bernie. Bernie Sanders. Yes, absolutely. This is Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Biden must be a bit annoyed that he spends all this time trying to look sort of young and vital by doing the peloton, yeah. and running onto the stage, and then Bernie's a smash hit just for looking old and wearing mittens. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know. But this is probably part of the PR campaign, isn't it, to make Biden look young? They said to him, here's your options. Either you get an old bloke to sit with there with some mittens or you've got to come out on a skateboard. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and then that image, as you have no doubt seen, was grabbed and placed into a million different memes. Uh, for example, here is the classic image of him from Friends. Here he is in the iconic 1930s Manhattan construction site picture. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, I have to say thank you to the million people who sent me these images of which this, for some reason, is my favourite. Uh, here's Bernie. Uh, to... <laughs> <laughs> that is the way my dad sat through every single drama production <laughs> during school. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Elliot again. <laughs> <laughs> Is another series of Alan Bennett monologues. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, down road, ten to two, ten to two. Uh, how? How do you make the Horvis ad last an hour and a half? <laughs> <laughs> every scene, oh. every scene, because oh, oh, you seem to have caught me among my northern things. <laughs> That round. The point's going to end. Maisie and Milton! <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and we'll see what our panelists can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject is unlikely lines from a costume drama. Sir, I demand satisfaction. I will meet you in that field at dawn and I expect a hand job minimum. <laughs> They're all naked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I never thought I'd say this, but I think I've fallen in love with a scullery maid. Apparently she grew up in a place called The Dip. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I cannot love you the way I wish to. The, the war in France has left me Less of a man than, than you deserve. Oh, how to explain? Someone shot my knob off. <laughs> <laughs> Heathcliff, my love, let me in, it's me, Cathy. I've left my keys at bingo, what am I like? <laughs> <laughs> at last, he's replied to my missive. Tell me, what does it say? New messenger boy, who dis? <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you think the Duchess is crying? You just refer to her husband's coffin as the Duke Box. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Windermere, you are far more massive and liquid. This is Lake Windermere, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> I bring bad news, my liege. The Duke of Richmond, the Earl of Derby and the Black Knight have all fallen, all, all gone. All turned into weather spoons. <laughs> <laughs> They crack the Enigma code in tonight's film, The Imitation Game. Can they crack the Enigma code in tonight's <laughs> film, The Imitation Game? <laughs> I can't go out there in just my garter and corset. What will my wife think? <laughs> <laughs> I must defy you, Father. I will not marry for money or status. I will only marry for love and a massive cock. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Mozart leaving the opera house. I shouted, Wolfgang, Wolfgang. He ignored me. But then he was eaten by a gang of wolves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, is that King Arthur? Uh, hoping you can help. It's not really a sword and a stone thing, more of a cucumber arse situation. <laughs> <laughs> I will not marry you, Mr. Darcy. Could you be my fuck buddy? <laughs> <laughs> if you prick me, do I not bleed? If you tickle me, do I not laugh? If I chat shit, do I not get banged? <laughs> <laughs> ten to two, ten to two, ten to two. Ten to two. <laughs> <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear on daytime TV. And now it's time for Repair Shop, where Rishi Sunak has brought in the entire British economy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I have a vowel, a consonant, and like seven emojis? <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for some country music in a loft with Johnny Cash in the attic. <laughs> 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 and after the break, Mark will be giving me all the tips on how to dress to impress. And I'll be telling Mark to shove his tips up his arse. <laughs> <laughs> and now the programme with the biggest carbon footprint. It's Come Mine With Me. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'll be looking round this mystery celebrity's house while struggling to walk and hallucinating. This is Through the K-Hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Susanna. I talked over you there. <laughs> <laughs> Who have I brought with me today? Thanks for asking, Vernon. It's my auntie Sue, uh, my mum Carol, and down the end is my gorgeous, gorgeous, soon to be stepdad Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness, look at those kiwi fruit. They look absolutely delicious. Oh, no, sorry, Simon's looking at his testicles again. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us today on Sunday Brunch are three celebrities who you were fairly certain were dead. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the best thing to do with leftovers is to put them in the fridge for a couple of days and then throw them away. <laughs> So, Boris says we're going to close our borders a full nine months after every other country in the world. Let's see if it's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> they have just 20 minutes to make a £1,000. Time to find out if they really are loose women. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm looking for a bigger penis in Wanted Down Under. <laughs> And now it's time for Neighbours, starring Ramesh Ranganathan. That's right, he's in this now as well. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think of the property? Uh, we love it. Of course we love it. We live here. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, this week's bargain hunt has been cancelled after some contestants accidentally bought the Ark of the Covenant and melted David Dickinson's face off. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our Saturday Kitchen Global Warming Special. And after the break, an emotional Greta Thunberg tries her hand at a baked Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> and now the very last episode of A Place in the Sun. <laughs> Next 
tonight, it's family fortunes, or as I like to call it, pointless for thick people. <laughs> Are you okay? I wouldn't have fallen over, but there's a dip. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. At the end of that round, the boys go to Ed, Maisie, and Milton. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Angela Barnes, Hugh Dennis, and Reese James. <laughs> Commiserations to Milton Jones, Maisie Adam, and Ed Gamble. Thanks for watching. I'm Darrell Green. Good night.